cheesy, easy. It's provolone pasta with fried zucchini, known in Italy as spaghetti alla narano. All you need to make it is spaghetti, provolone cheese, parmigiano reggiano, and the secret ingredient, fried zucchini. We start by thinly slicing a pound and a half of zucchini. We're talking potato chip thin. A mandolin makes the job easy. We'll also need five ounces of shredded provolone cheese. Provolone del Monaco cheese is used in the traditional version of this Italian recipe. This Italian cheese can be hard to find, so it's fine to reach for cacio cavallo or a smoked provolone that is just a bit peppery. Sound familiar? You may have seen this dish featured in the documentary with Stanley Tucci called Searching for Italy. If you don't want to fry your own zucchini chips, check for zucchini chips in the supermarket. Be sure to select a variety that does not have any seasoning but salt. If you are frying your own zucchini, here's how. If you've got a deep fryer, set the temperature to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, bring a few inches of oil to that temperature and fry the zucchini quickly in batches. As soon as the zucchini are golden underneath, give them a flip. It won't take long. Then transfer them to an absorbent towel and fry the next batch. Even if you don't want to fry your own zucchini chips, we think it's really fun to watch zucchini fry. Narano is near Naples to give you some idea of where this dish originated. Sprinkle on a pinch of salt and set your zucchini aside. It probably seems crazy to fry zucchini for a pasta. We thought so too before we tried it for the first time. Here's the thing. When you fry the zucchini, the flavor becomes extra concentrated as the water evaporates. That gives us an intense and unique ingredient to flavor our sauce. We're guessing you won't be able to resist sampling a few of these crispy treats as you cook. We never can. Time to add the spaghetti to boiling water. We're making pasta for four or about 11 ounces. Set your timer for three quarters of the cook time on your package instructions for al dente spaghetti. While the pasta cooks, we're getting the sauce ready. We start as we do for most Italian pasta sauces with a few tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil over medium heat. We toss in a whole clove of garlic to flavor the oil. In this case, leaving the garlic in the sweater, as they say in Italian, which just means leaving the clove unpeeled to make sure the garlic flavor is super mild. After about a minute, toss in most of the zucchini chips. We add two ladles of the hot water that the pasta is cooking in. We're now rehydrating our intensely flavorful zucchini and pulling that flavor into our pasta sauce. When the spaghetti is three quarters of the way cooked, we add it to the sauce. We add two to three ladles more of the hot starchy water that the pasta was cooking in and let it finish cooking in the pan. It's common in Italian pasta recipes to finish cooking the pasta in a flavorful sauce. It's the same technique we use to make peppery cacio e pepe, another classic recipe you can watch on our channel. Before we've even added the provolone, we can already see that the water is thickening into a sauce. That's because the pasta has released its starch into the water itself. This is already a delicious sauce, but wouldn't it be better still with some cheese? In goes the shredded provolone cheese. and one ounce of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Use Parmigiano, not so-called Parmesan. In many countries like the US, Parmesan can refer to any number of less flavorful aged cheeses. And we give it a mix, adding another ladle of pasta water if needed, off the heat, to thin out our sauce and make it the ideal consistency. And mamma mia, what a cheesy provolone pasta we've made. Unlike the cacio e pepe or the so-called fettuccine alfredo, some stringy cheese bites are welcome here. Let's get this on the plate and into our mouths. And of course, the crispy zucchini chips are a treat in and of themselves. And so we've saved a few for the top. An unforgettable vegetarian pasta dish. And speaking of fried zucchini, while we have the frying oil ready, we're going to throw on another fried zucchini treat super popular in Italy, fried zucchini flowers. Whenever zucchini blossoms are in season, they pop up everywhere in Italy, in home kitchens and on restaurant menus. 
They are truly sfiziosi, as they say in Italian. Before frying zucchini flowers, there are a few things you'll want to do to get them ready. First, remove these tough outer leaves. Most Italians also remove the stamen or pistils of the zucchini flowers. They are perfectly edible, but they can be a bit bitter. Zucchini flowers are delicate, so avoid tearing them. While removing the stamens and pistons, set the flower vertically and open it up gently from the top. Then just use two fingers to gently pull it out, or use a pair of kitchen scissors to do the job. We prepared our zucchini flowers in advance, and so it's time to make a quick batter. To make the batter for fried zucchini flowers, combine all-purpose or cake flour with cold carbonated water. And mix until you have a thin batter that is crepe-like. The hardest part of this appetizer is finding zucchini flowers abroad, so save them from the garden or ask a farmer to save some for you. Put a few ice cubes in the finished batter to keep it cold. In the meantime, get the frying oil ready. Here we are raising the heat of our oil to 340 degrees Fahrenheit, or 170 degrees Celsius. Now we dip our zucchini blossoms gently in the batter. Shake them off and add them to the hot oil. Don't add too many zucchini flowers at once. And use a fork to separate them in the beginning if they try to cling to one another. Fry the zucchini flowers until the bottom is crispy when you tap it with a fork. Then flip and finish frying. When the flowers are crispy on both sides, transfer them to an absorbent towel. Salt immediately and serve. Or you can use panko breadcrumbs to finish off the fried zucchini flowers, like this. So there you have it, a delicious appetizer and pasta dish to make zucchini the star of your lunch or dinner. If you liked this video or learned something new, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel for more recipes like this from Italy and beyond, and click the bell for new video notifications. Let us know how your provolone pasta turns out in the comments. And buon appetito!